An immediate one highlights the news making ways ranging from current affairs, community stories, sports and economic news. Here are the headlines. Body of 11-year-old suspected to have drowned washes ashore in Henty's Bay. Napu wants barbaric NIP vehicle purchases reversed. And highest income from conservancies since 2019 recorded. I am Glenn Rashipura and this is NMH at One. On a rather sad note, in our midday news update, the body of one of the two girls that were suspected of having drowned at Henty's Bay was found offshore about six kilometers north side of the coastal town. The head of community affairs in the Iranga region, Inspector Eleni Shapumba, confirmed this. The deceased was identified as 11-year-old Marie France Brogerhoff Gombok. Her next of kin were informed. The body was transported to Valves Bay Police Mortuary, where an autopsy will be conducted. The search for the missing Hilia Rashmi continues. After this short break, we'll be getting into your newspaper review segment. Welcome to Active Kids, a daily TV show that sparks creativity, learning, and fun for young minds. With exciting activities and lessons, Active Kids inspires curiosity and a love for learning. You face to the <laughs> The perfect mix of play and education. Don't miss out on the fun. Tune into Active Kids on NTV every weekday at 10 o'clock and let the adventure begin. Starting off the newspaper review, we start off with the Namibian Science front page, which reports the Namibia Public Workers Union says a decision taken by the Namibia Institute of Pathology's Board of Directors to acquire five vehicles for its executive committee is barbaric and unlawful. The union is further demanding the resignation of the executives. The institute's mandate to serve the public is playing second fiddle to executives' interests, General Secretary Petrus Nevonga said in a letter to NIP Board Chairperson Brian Asep. NIP earlier this month splashed $5.3 million on vehicles for five of its top executives, despite the existence of fringe benefits to allow the executives to purchase their own vehicles and the lack of vehicles to carry out essential services at their institution. Moving on to the Namibian Sons, page 3, the Namibia Economic Freedom Fighters last Friday staged a demonstration at the Rani Group of Companies in Oshakati, demanding that the group do away with the contract labor system as workers feel they have no job security. A petition submitted to the group further accused management of allegedly using abusive language towards workers. Cornelius Nepela, who handed over the petition, said salaries are low and employees are expected to work seven days a week with no overtime for Sunday shifts. Our salaries are not calculated per hour as other companies do. They said our salary is fixed, but if you go on leave, you only receive half of your salary, he said, adding that workers do not have clearly stipulated employment conditions. Moving over to the Republicans' front page, it reports, in the world of culinary arts, success stories often emerge from the most unexpected places. For 18 years, Swagopmund-based chef Simon Amukwata has fought against the odds, turning his humble beginnings into a tale of inspiration. Amukwata's journey from scrubbing toilets to mastering the art of sushi has captivated the hearts of many. Beginning as a cleaner in a sushi restaurant, his days were spent ensuring that every corner of the establishment was spotless, but little did he know that he was cleaning more than just restrooms. He was cleaning the path to his future. Driven by a deep passion for food and an unyielding determination to rise above his circumstances, Amukwata started to observe the chefs at work during his breaks. Moving on to the Republicans, page three, 
one of the Bank of Namibia's deputy presidents, Epson Wanguta, will step in January as the interim managing director of the national oil company, Namcor. According to reliable information, the Minister of Public Enterprises, Ipumbushimi, decided to appoint Wanguta to the position after a discussion with Namco's board. Wanguta briefly served as governor of the central bank when Shimi left that role in 2020 and became finance minister. Wanguta, who is highly regarded in government circles, was also appointed as a temporary commissioner of the Namibian Revenue Agency in 2019 before the appointment of Sam Shivute as head. Now, after his service at the agency, he became head of of Bonn after Shimi joined the cabinet and before Johannes Havahab was appointed to the lead central bank, to lead central bank rather. Now moving on, on the Alga Minas Zeitung's front page, according to the Ministry of Environment, the organized illegal harvesting of endemic and protected plants is getting worse every year. A Tanzanian woman who was arrested last month as the head of a smuggling syndicate has to stand trial, reports the Alga Minas Zeitung. The woman and her suspected Namibian accomplices had 46 rare plants in their possession. The plant, known as an elephant, is extremely rare and endangered in southern Africa. These plants are very popular and sought after by collectors internationally. Very high prices are paid for these species. According to the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism, the Tanzanian woman and three Namibians were arrested in the Okanjombo area in the Kunene region with the 46 rare plants. On page two, the Algamani Zaitung reports that Namibia has achieved 10th place in the Great Southern Bio Blitz. In this annual spring initiative, participating teams spread across the Southern Hemisphere record and identify all living organisms in their designated area within four days. Almost 140 projects were submitted in the Southern Hemisphere and more than 20 countries participated in the project. Southern Africa submitted 37 projects and Namibia ranked sixth in this area. According to a press release from the Gobabeb Desert Research Institute, Namib Research Institute, which organized the Namibian contribution to the project, several teams were spread across the Zambesi region in Namibia. Now, the task was to record more than 5,400 observations of more than 1,000 species, plants, and animals. Now, after this short break, we'll continue with our newspaper review. Welcome to MyDotNA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Mostat. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind-the-scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss my dot NA cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. Welcome. Leading the Namibians front page, social activist and investment scheme operator Michael Amushelelo was yesterday given a warning from the police before being released. This comes after he handed himself over to the police after attempting to close Rani's supermarket at Okuriangava in Ventuk. Inspector General Joseph Shikongo yesterday confirmed Amushelelo was given a warning and allowed to leave. Moving over to page three, the owners of Caprivi Cash and Kerry at Katima Mulilo have been accused of assaulting two workers who allegedly stole fireworks and a comforter from the store on Sunday to the value of $13,199 million. Zambesi Regional Police Commander Commissioner Andreas Shilelo told the Namibian on Monday that the owners of the business have registered a case of theft, adding that the workers were issued a medical form after they were arrested and taken for treatment at the Katima Mulilo District Hospital. On the New Era's front page, it reports that the Zambesi community, in collaboration with the Namibia Nature Foundation and the Fisheries Ministry, continues fighting to ensure the sustainability of protected fisheries areas to save those species threatened by one over-harvesting. 
One such species that is nearly extinct is the African pie along the Kwando River within the Muyuni Conservancy's main water channel. City Police Deputy Chief of Administration Adam Asep has issued a stern warning to individuals with outstanding warrants of arrest related to traffic offences to, to settle it or face arrest on the spot. He emphasized the seriousness of these warrants, urging those affected to promptly address the issue by visiting their nearest traffic court. Outstanding warrants of arrest amount to contempt of court, he said. Moving over to market watch, mining and querying are expected to drive economic growth in Namibia next year, expanding by an anticipated 6.9% according to the Bank of Namibia. The Bank of Namibia recently released its economic outlook update projecting a deceleration rather in the country's gross domestic product growth for 2023 and 2024 to 3.9% and 3.4% respectively. The slowdown is primarily attributed to weakened global demand and an anticipated contraction in the agriculture sector. According to the report, the domestic economy is expected to grow by 3.9% in 2023, with a subsequent moderation to 3.4% in 2024. This reflects a notable slowdown from the 7.6% recorded in 2022, but has been revised upwards from the initial August 2023 projections of 3.3%. After this short break, we'll be getting into your economic news. To stay with NMH at one. To another exciting episode of Pirongo Top. We will be here this year and for the work for the very first year month of the Getting into our economic news, conservancies generated cash income and in-kind benefits of over 140 million Namibian dollars in 2022, the highest since 2019. Community conservation now covers 59.6% of all communal land in Namibia, with an estimated 244,587 residents and facilitating 3,223 jobs. In 2022, community conservation contributed an estimated 913 million Namibian dollars to the net national income while the contribution from the beginning of 1990 to the end of 2022 was more than 13.4 billion Namibian dollars. This is according to the latest figures published in the State of Community Conservation Report for 2022. According to the report, of the 182,284 square kilometers covered by community conservation, conservancies managed 166,179 square kilometers of Namibia, about 20.2%, while community conservation facilitated 3,223 jobs in 2022. A total of 1,056 people were employed by conservancies. Meanwhile, 67 joint venture enterprises with conservancies employed 866 people full-time and 22 part-time, while 44 hunting concessions created 127 full-time and 163 part-time employees. According to the report of the $140 million cash and in-kind benefits generated by conservancies in 2022, Conservation hunting generated 34.8 million Namibian dollars with a meat value of 8.5 million Namibian dollars. Tourism generated 92.3 million Namibian dollars and indigenous plant products 1.27 million Namibian dollars, while other miscellaneous income brought in 3.6 million Namibian dollars. Now, Conservancy residents earned a total cash income of 75.3 million Namibian dollars 
of these, more than $47.9 million came from joint venture tourism, $24.6 million from conservancies, and $2.7 million from conservation hunting. The game meat received by conservancies from trophy hunting weighed in at Sorry about that. We'll now move on to our economic indicators. The Nubian dollar trades against the British pound at 23.58, against the euro at 20.35, against the US dollar at 18.58. $2.60 gets you one Chinese yuan. On the Nambia Stock Exchange, MTC went up at 0.50%. Overall index closed at 0.49% going up, while local index closed at 0.08% also going up. On the commodities market, gold and platinum went down while copper and brand crude oil went up. Brand crude oil trading at 0.97%, going for 79 US dollars and 99 cents per barrel. After the break, we'll be getting into news from Africa. We are so excited to be kickstarting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past week. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. Getting into our news from across the continent, more than 2,000 South African workers remain underground for a third day of sit-in protests at a mine in Rustenburg, about 100 kilometers northwest of Johannesburg. A local union official has, however, told the BBC Newsday program that some of the workers are being held hostage by their colleagues underground. For some time, we thought this is just a sit-in, but as developments came out, those that are able to live underground tell us that workers underground are held against their will, so it is actually a hostage situation. Geoffrey Moche, the regional secretary of the National Union of Mine Workers, told the BBC. Now, the protest began on Monday morning and has been labeled illegal as it was not sanctioned by the National Mine Union. It is reportedly fueled by disputes over a profit sharing scheme and the release of workers' pension funds. Implants, the company that recently acquired the Buffalo Gang Rasimon Platinum Mine, where the protest is underway, says that 167 workers had safely re emerged, while 2,038 others remained underground by Tuesday. In our next story, voters in Democratic Republic of Congo took part in a general election on Wednesday after a chaotic campaign marred by opposition allegations of impeding fraud, electoral violence and logistical setbacks that could prevent many from voting in Bunai in the restive eastern Congo, local resident Serges Mwakanira was the first to cast a vote. In several towns in the region and in the capital Kinshasa, the process kicked off with delays as election kits had not arrived at some polling stations. In Goma and Beni in eastern Congo, some voters struggled to find their names on voter lists, which were only made available at their polling stations on Wednesday morning, according to Reuters witnesses. For months, the Senai Election Commission has insisted it would deliver a free and fair vote as promised across Africa's second largest country, even as independent observers and critics flag irregularities 
they say will jeopardize the legitimacy of the results. About 44 million Congolese are registered to take part in the presidential, legislative and regional vote. President Felix Tizekedi is competing against about two dozen opposition challenges, challenges rather, in the hope of a second term running the mineral rich yet poverty stricken nation. After the break, we'll be getting into our international news. Namibians are still safe. Everywhere else, the Supreme Court said we are not going to rely on foreign judgments. By all means, we try to not make challenges public figures, but at the end of the day, they are. Uh, very good evening. My name is Tewende Bela, your host. With their Protestant offsprings. But the implementation, like she's saying, is another thing. In our international news, Colorado's Supreme Court has ruled that Donald Trump cannot run for president next year in the state, citing a constitutional insurrection clause. The court ruled 4-3 that Trump was not an eligible candidate because he had engaged in an insurrection over the U.S. Capitol riot nearly three years ago. Trump can still run for U.S. president in next year's election, but it could make things more difficult for him. His campaign vowed to appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. Criticizing the decision, Trump's advisers said it was completely flawed. The ruling only mentions the state's primary election on the 5th of March, when Republican voters will choose their preferred candidate for president but it could affect the general election in Colorado next November. It is the first ever use of Section 3 of the U.S. Constitution's 14th Amendment to disqualify a presidential candidate. Tuesday's decision, which has been placed on hold pending appeal until next month, only applies in Colorado. The decision reverses an earlier one from a Colorado judge who ruled that the 14th Amendment's insurrection ban did not apply to presidents because the section did not explicitly mention them. Now in our next story, Greece's conservative government on Tuesday pushed through a controversial law offering limited legal status to migrant workers overriding the opposition of several of its own lawmakers, including a former prime minister. Migration Minister Dimitris Karadis has said the legalization move is purely labor-related. It is aimed at those who arrived in Greece before 2021 and have been working illegally. The temporary legal status will only be valid for a one- or three-year period and applies to those already with job offers from from employers. Some 30,000 migrants are expected to benefit mainly from Albania, Georgia and the Philippines, according to the Migration Ministry, addressing serious labor shortages in the farm sector. The government made approval of the bill a party discipline priority for ruling New Democracy Party MPs after former Prime Minister Antonius Samaras last week announced the announced he would not vote in favor. Now, legal migration can be an investment lever. If we do not utilize it, we risk dropping our growth rate, Karadis has said. He said that during a recent initiative offering to move jobless Greeks from the north to work in Crete, just two people showed interest. After the break, we'll be getting into the world of sports. Welcome to What's Cooking, where culinary passion meets expert insights somebody must really want to cook and want to cook good food. Immerse yourself in the bustling world of professional kitchens as top chefs create mouth-watering dishes. Join us for in-depth interviews as our host explores the experiences and expertise of our guest chefs. Don't miss out. Tune in to What's Cooking on NTV every Friday at 2100 hours and let the culinary adventure begin. Let's get into our local sports 
news. Nakianache Cormac scored three goals for Namibia and team captain Gillian Hermanos won as they once again stunned the previously unbeaten South African women's team 4-2 in the final of the Nkosi Cup indoor hockey tournament in Cape Town. Namibia led 2-1 after the first Chaka, a score that remained unchanged until halftime. Cormac completes the tournament as the overall top goal scorer on 12, on 12 comfortably ahead of the next best Edith Molikua of South Africa with five. Nico Eslinger, fresh from the recent African Junior Swimming Championship in Mauritius, where he won a bronze medal in the under-18 men's open water race, emerged at the inaugural winner of the two-kilometer team Flippy Open Water Splash at Swakopmund yesterday. The solo women's winner Maja Brinkman also won a medal at the Commonwealth Youth Games this year and finished the race in overall fifth position. A solid total of 60 swimmers competed in the solo and relay event at the mall organized by Olympic Open Water swimmer Philip Sadler. Now, after 15 matches, which saw the team celebrating five wins and suffering three draws and seven losses in the first half of the Deep Marine Premiership season, the University of Namibia Football Club has sacked head coach Ronnie Canalello. Canalello took charge of the side in October 2022 with former international teammate Robert Nausep working as his assistant. He had worked at UNAM before from 2016 until late 2018. The university team was allegedly unhappy with their 11th position on the lock, with the first half of the season having concluded recently. After the break, we'll be getting into international sports news. Welcome to Active Kids, a daily TV show that sparks creativity, learning and fun for young minds. With exciting activities and lessons, Active Kids inspires curiosity and a love for learning. New face to the <laughs> the perfect mix of play and education. Don't miss out on the fun. Tune into Active Kids on NTV every weekday at 10 o'clock and let the adventure begin. Getting into our international sports news, Chelsea booked their place in the semi-finals of the League Cup on Tuesday when they defeated Newcastle United 4-2 in a penalty shootout at Stamford Bridge after the two sides finished the 90 minutes level at 1-1. Kiran Trieper fired Newcastle's second penalty wide and Matt Ritchie saw his efforts saved by Georgi Petrovic making only his second start in goal for the Blues. Now Manchester City will have to cope without Erling Haaland as they aim to leave to the club World Cup for the first time in Friday's final against Fluminense. The European champions shrugged off their sluggish Premier League form to cruise past Uruwa Reds 3-0 in Tuesday's semi-final in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Now Haaland watched on from the stands as Matteo Kovacic and Bernardo Silva struck after Mauritius Koi Breton on goal opened the scoring. The highlights follows after the break. Let's get into the news highlights from today's broadcast. More than 2,000 South African workers remain underground for a third day of sit-in protest at a mine in Rustenburg, about 100 kilometers northwest of Johannesburg. And Colorado's Supreme Court has ruled that Donald Trump cannot run for president next year in the state, citing a constitutional insurrection clause. And Kiana Che Cormac scored three goals for Namibia and team captain Gillian Hermanus won as they once again stunned the previously 
unbeaten South African women's team. And with that, we've come to the end of the highlights and the end of the broadcast. Remember to tune in every weekday at 1 p.m. to spend your lunch hour with Animage at One, catching up on the latest news in Namibia and beyond. From me, Glenora Shipura, until next time.